good. So welcome everyone to our May 13th Chaos a Common Working Group meeting. I don't know if you could hear Alexa talking in the background. I think she, she thought I said something to her. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. I can uh, uh, share my screen with the agenda. That might be helpful. Um, I encourage people to take notes because while I'm sharing my screen and uh, clicking on stuff, I'm not a great note taker. So if somebody I or several help. somebody's would like to help out, that would be awesome. I can certainly help in that regard. Yeah. Cool. Um, first, did anybody have anything to add to the agenda? If so, feel free to just drop it at an appropriate place in the in the agenda. Um, <laughs> I saw Beth wrong meeting brain. All right, um, so let's have a look at the issues and pull requests. We'll start with the pull requests. Um, oh, look, a, a new pull request. Terrific, thank you. Um, okay, it looks like this is the one for standardizing the, the readmes. Yeah, I can talk about this. Please, yeah. Uh, so this is a subtask of the broader aim of the ongoing standardization of the working work repositories. And this PR specifically aims at standardizing the readmes in the focus area directory and also it standardizes the readmes for each focus area as well. So uh, work group common, my favorite working group is the first one to get these updates uh, <laughs> and the changes. <laughs> and the changes are listed in the PR itself. So first I implemented the specific relative path format for pointing the focus areas as well as the matrix. And then I added the subheadings of focus area names in each focus area readme. Uh, before that, actually only who focus area was having the subheading. And lastly, I reordered the focus area and matrix in the lexicographical order to match the way uh, GitHub displays these files and folders. So yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, I feel like I feel like there are a lot of a lot of changes to look at. So I don't want to merge this one right here in this meeting. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest, I'm not going to have time to, uh, to review it uh, because I have one more meeting after this and then I'm taking a four day weekend. So does somebody else want to volunteer to just uh, to do a review on this and then merge it? I mean, at first glance, this looks, this looks great. I don't see any issues at all with it. I can, I can take a look at it. I'm, I'm familiar with uh, the standardization. Cool. Okay. If you just want to take a look at it and merge it when you're ready, that would be, that would be great. Awesome. Thank you, Rajek. This is great. Yep. Um, so that was our pull request. And then issues. Um, I probably won't go through all of these because I think we went through them in more detail last week, but maybe we should talk about this new one. Do we have, do we have uh, Justin on the call? No. Um, So it looks like the idea is to create a metric on um, what a drive-through contributor means. What did we um, what did we decide on like drive-through, drive-by, Matt? I know you were thinking about this. Like, is this language-wise? Did we come to any kind of decision? So the the conversation. Sorry, let me back up. The conversation was you know, drive-by is often associated with some, some negative uh, connotations. And so is that the best word for this? Should it be called something else? Oh, look, yes. it says. So Sean had updated Augur with flyby. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Sean. Yeah. And then I, th I think the only other residual place where this was seen kind of in the chaos ecosystem drive. was with Oh, go ahead, Sean. Drive through on Vermore Lab. Okay. And my thought in the meeting yesterday was that I, I think th these are terms that are established in different parts of open source. And whatever we call it, we probably need to provide a set of synonyms for people. And perhaps a statement that drive by uh, has 
negative connotations related to gang violence in Los Angeles, primarily, and we'd like to avoid it. This, conver uh, this conversation uh, kind of uh, landed in evolution the other day as well. Uh, and one of the one of the one of the other names that uh, came up is uh, episodic episodic contributions, which I actually prefer. Uh, and there there is some academic literature that uh, uh, refers to uh, refers yeah. I don't know if any of you are familiar. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, Kevin. No, go ahead. Um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with the Inclusive Naming Initiative, but they've been uh, their language work stream has been gathering a group of terms of concern, and um, I believe that spreadsheet is pub is publicly available. Um, they don't mention drive by, and I I think that that's a, a good good addition. So I'm going to put that in there, and they don't mention drive through either. But um, I love that there is a, a term that I can offer as, as an alternative. Thank you. If you guys are interested in seeing that spreadsheet, I'll drop the link into the chat. Cool, thank you. Yeah, I've been involved in that initiative off and on, uh, less so lately. Um, but it's, yeah, there's some great work happening there. So that's, that's fantastic. Um, I tend please to do, please do share the link. I tend to prefer episodic or drive through. So I'm gonna leave that as a, as a comment. Um, and it looks like they've created a Google Doc. Um, okay, um, so I think what we should do with this one, um, because we don't have we don't have Georg or Justin, and they seem to be the two that are are kind of driving this. So I think maybe uh, we put that on the agenda for. For the next meeting. That's what there is a reminder to, to do that later. Um, okay. Anything else on the on the issues or pull requests? <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Um, I have an update regarding oh. the issue. Yeah, please. So the standard structure for readme.md, which we are planning the template has been added to the governance repository and i think i can drop the link to that it's in the chat box oh perfect so so in the introduction section we have some questions regarding the goals purpose and the background of the working group I'm not sure if I'm the best person to answer these questions. Like I would be willing to create the structure, but I would prefer these questions be answered by the maintainers or someone who has been attached with the working group for a long time. Mm -hmm. So the contributing, that, yeah, go ahead. I, I think a lot of that text is in the current readme. But maybe, maybe um, if somebody wanted to, um, maybe somebody kind of pair with Yash and yeah. help fill in the the bits for this this working group. Do we have any? any yeah, I could. I would be happy to sit with Yash and just kind of walk through it. Okay. And, and then if he has to do it for other working groups, I think he'll get a sense of the judgments we're making. Yep. So, I guess what we can do is I can send a PR. And Sean, if you'd be willing to review it, yeah, add add some things on the those sections, and then we can see how it works out. And is that PR already in there, or no? I have to create. It. Okay, okay, okay. So I'll give the two of you the action item to work on the readme with the the new template. Have we have we done any reviews on the the new template yet as a community? Just the the general structure of the template and not the personalization for each working group. Um, no. That might be the first step. 
So, could you elaborate on that? Can you that? Sure. I'm sorry. Could you elaborate on that? Uh, so you're you're working on the the general structure of the README, uh, and we'd like to use this general structure in all of the working groups. Uh, so if you have a if you have the document in a format that you're uh, you're ready to share, I think it it would be appropriate to share it with the community and get feedback on on the version that it is currently uh, prior to prior to trying to implement it across all of the, the working groups. So it looks like, I mean, this is, it's been merged into the templates directory. Um, I'm not sure who reviewed it as a, as part of that process or who. Uh, Georg reviewed it. Okay. Um, so are it's you supposed to yeah, go ahead. Are you suggesting, Kevin, that he should um, send this template out to the mailing list and see if people have feedback on the, the template itself before we yes, apply it? Yes, just kind of a broad, okay. broad review from the community because they're the ones that'll be implementing it individually in there in several different working groups. So, so alternatively, the, the uh, conversation we're having right now, we could we could take some time and and look at it and give him feedback as well. <laughs> Actually, the template was discussed in the Google Doc earlier with all the working groups, and it has simply just been replicated in Markdown. So, do we want to repeat yeah, that process? We, we reviewed it here. We spent a bunch of time in the last uh, the last meeting, I think, reviewing the template, didn't we? Was that? Yeah. Yeah. So we want to ask for a final review. What do people think? Those of you that worked in, that participate in more working groups than I do, do we feel like this has been um, reviewed by enough people that it's it's probably good to go, or do we think it needs a uh, post to the mailing list for more review? What I recalled was like uh, that word template, which initially was created, was reviewed by many people. Like even I reviewed that yeah. template and <clears throat> added my suggestions. <clears throat> like I, I feel like a lot of people have reviewed it, but as yeah. Kevin pointed out, sending in the mailing list will not hurt. It'll give a one another pair of eyes, and before we watch it, so. So maybe just sending it to the mailing list for the final feedback will be the best option. But it has been reviewed in detail a lot. I, I'm yes. not suggesting a full review. So I think it's more of an awareness communication to the mailing list, and because it has it has really been discussed in some in great detail in every working group. And my point is merely that this is a this is a community wide change. Uh, so yeah, it's just a. We need to make sure that we uh, that everyone is on the same page on it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so Yash, why don't you at least send it out to the mailing list so that people know that we have this new template if they haven't been participating in the um, um, But I maybe we could. I... Oh, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I was going to say maybe we could ask the the working groups to uh, add it to their agenda to just take a peek at it to see if it's going to fit with their their working group as well. In addition to that, we have the contributing.md template and the code of contact.md template also. So I think we'll just put it in the same mail. Yeah, that would be great. Um, anything else on the templates? No, that's all. It's okay. Thanks, Josh. This is great work. I really appreciate all of the work you've done on this. Happy to it. Um, okay, next up, 
Um, review action items from previous meetings. Thank you, whoever highlighted that while I was finding my place in the notes. Um, it was me because I felt I felt bad because I was taking <laughs> minutes in the wrong week. And I saw you <laughs> typing and I thought you were probably like, oh, I thought Matt said he was going to take minutes. <laughs> and I was actually doing I it. I was. But... I was like, Matt said he was going to take notes. Nobody's taking notes. It's not I was anywhere. totally doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, let's see. There were a bunch of action items last week for um, for yash um but i think these are all these are all things that you've been um i think that we just talked about yep we all check except the prs one yeah but we have a new action item for that so we're we're covered um and then sean was going to work to smooth out the time waiting for submitter action and bring it back to the group to talk about it and sean didn't do that okay Fair I'm enough. waiting for submitter action. So, so let's just, let's just let's move copy on that. To okay, there we go. Um, already done. Okay, so those were the action items we had from last week. Um, so we also have the metrics spreadsheet. Do we feel like there's anything specific that we anybody wants to talk about related to the Related to the spreadsheet. So I added the I added the blank template row nineteen for ratio with dot action. Oh yeah, cool. And so the template's there. It's completely empty at this point. Okay. Um, but this has come up. I just I guess I'd like to say that the bot activity has come up several times now in a variety of different places. And maybe it's the same people bringing it up, but nonetheless, it's still, I think, really interesting. And I would love to start working on this. So I think it's a really good filter for other metrics that we have. Yeah, absolutely. I think that would be great. Anything else new that we need to talk about in the spreadsheet? Okay. Now we have we have several metrics that we could that we could talk about. Um, it looks like maybe time waiting for some interaction. We should wait on that because Sean's still working on smoothing that one out. Yeah. Um, but what about these these other three? Is there uh, one of these that we want to look at right now? Space event location, space collaboration platforms, or bot metrics ratio. I'm just looking at them all for a second. Okay. You do that, just pull them up, see what we've got. I'm not sure who was driving these. Okay, so the ratio of bot to human activity, as you mentioned, is just a template. So that one's not ready for review. But if somebody wanted to work on that for the next meeting, we could uh, review it in the next meeting. Oh, I could work on that. Maybe could you go back for a second to it? Oh, yeah, sure. Maybe what would be the question? Is it really just trying to understand the ratio of all bot activity against human activity? That might help me a little bit if I work on the description and objectives. Did we have a couple of bot metrics that we were talking about? We had one that was just the, it was like volume of bot activity. Okay. But that's a tough one, right? Because it's not contextualized. Yeah. So it's, we could do that too, but. Uh, Matt, maybe something like, um, to what extent is the activity in a project? Represented by actual human 
interaction or something like that. Yeah, and this one gets interesting because um, I mean, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but um, one of the things that's that's interesting is that uh, you have human activity that kicks off is that is designed solely to kick off a bot activity too, which is which is kind of interesting. So that's like a human activity, but it triggers a right. It's directly tied. Bot to, it's like a one to one. Yeah. I'm I'm wondering here if. Uh, the important, so, so yeah, the, the, the key thing here in this discussion is guessing how much activity is run by bots versus human activity, because then we'll be more accurate when tracing the human activity. Is this perhaps the goal or just having the ratio? Because having the ratio is what is mm. the use, the, what, what is the business case here or the use case? Uh, Another goal, another goal I've heard other than what you said, Daniel, is that mm -hmm. it, the bots are indicators of sort of progress along a delivery pipeline. So the bot activity in one hand, on the one hand is not a person. That's good to know. On the other hand, it's also a signal of progress and where progress might be getting stuck. Those, so there, that's the second way I've heard people using bot distinctions. Mm -hmm. I think there's also that social aspect. So if I'm considering contributing or using a project, well, if I'm considering contributing to a project and I look at all of the activity is heavily bot and there's maybe three humans that are doing the work, like that would be different than if the volume is, is all humans. Like I would, I would prefer that as a contributor, just me personally. I don't so, want to join a community that's all like robotic, but um, so I think that there's that social aspect too. I'm imagining a film called Robo Coder. <laughs> and I think also one of the things to keep in mind is like large numbers of bot activity um, also tends to be an indicator of um, well maturity or volume in a project um, because. Kubernetes would fall apart without the bots. Like, right. like we rely oh. on the bots to actually um, help us make sure that we get the get the work done. Um, and it's just it's just because of the you know that community is just so absolutely massive, um, and there's so much going on. I'm it's not be size more than maturity. I'm not sure. Sorry, to, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, go ahead, Kevin. Uh, I'm, I'm not completely sure that looking at the ratio of bot activity to humans is appropriate. And uh, to, to look at the Kubernetes example, uh, one, of the, one of the main functions of bots in Kubernetes is to add labels to things, right? Mm -hmm. So, and when, when a bot adds a label to something in Kubernetes, it's usually by command of a human uh, so that's replacing a task where prior someone who had administrative access could have added the label. Now we've got two entities adding a label. So we've actually doubled the number of uh, entities that are, that are on that task uh, as to prior. So in this case, it's a matter of uh, the, the bot provides access and it's, uh, it's not really a... Uh, The, when you look at the the ratio of human to bot activity, uh, what are we what are we trying to get at here? I, I suppose is the is the question. Yeah, and just to add to that, Kevin, you make a really good point because um, one of the main purposes of of the Prowl bot that is used by by Kubernetes and other projects is to get around the fact that 
um, GitHub's permissions are not particularly granular. So what you do is you give the bot a bunch of permissions to do things. And then within, within the bot, you have indications of who's allowed to do what um, based on various uh, roles that are a lot more granular than what, um, what GitHub has. So, so in this case, it's, you know, yes, it helps the project scale. That's a big, big part of what it does, but it also, it's also a way of controlling the permissions. Yeah, I view, uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna ask, is there a way to um, delineate between bots that are initiated with a human interaction or bots that just happen? Like, is that something that we could pull out separately? Most I think, bots do both. So I, like, I for instance, we, I just added in the, in the Slack channel, a bot that shows the meetings for the day. So that I, I didn't, I don't have to do anything now. It'll just do that from now on. So that's like not a human interaction, but it will show up as an, and it would show up as an activity as a, as a comment. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, a good point, Kevin, that, we, you know, to pull those out and maybe deal with those a little separately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the one way to look at it is the automation of tasks, and then the the other way, the the part that uh, that I'm that I'm actually more interested in is the access and uh, transparency of actions. Uh, I think those are those are kind of two different things. What I'm hearing is like multiple metrics related to the bots. One is like transparency through bots, efficiency through bots, or uh, human versus bots comparison. These are highly contextualized maybe, but the sense I'm getting is like two or three metrics along those lines. Yeah, perhaps this perhaps this metric is the ratio of automated bot activity, where we're specifically looking at how many tasks and how much activity is automated. So it seems like there are, I think there are several purposes for tracking bots. So bot would be a data point, a thing that we capture about the activity in a repo. And there may be, so the question is, are there multiple bot metrics or are there parameters within a single metric related to bots? I think that's the discussion I'm hearing. Uh, my, if my thoughts are not aligned at all with what you all were thinking, then just say, Sean, we don't know what you're talking about and we can move on. <laughs> I was thinking about what you were saying and, and then it comes to my mind another. Uh, so I, I was thinking how many of the people using, for instance, the dashboards are actually taking care of bot activity? And I thought none of them. Well, so Kubernetes the, dashboard people are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But so bot activity is important. But when tracking human activity, we don't care about that bot activity. The only moment where I see it might be worth exploring bot activity is when you are running certain things. So for instance, how long does it take to, uh, to build something in the testing platform? So that's, that's run. So the, the, the first event running this is done by a bot and then it takes certain time. And then, you know, this is, this is, uh, uh, this is sent the, the final artifact is sent to, to some artifactory place or so so the thing is with with that time you can make a decision as maybe it's taking too long maybe the code is too complex so then we should reduce certain areas so then the build process will be faster or something else that's the place where i see we can make decisions anywhere else as the ones in github or in git repositories or so i don't have a proper use case right now that they can think of that is useful to track, but removing bot activity. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I mean, that's currently the, I think a lot of the, I don't know, the, the work in the tools that we have right now around bots is in removing them. Um, 
so that they don't get mixed in with, with actual humans. And so I wonder if that's, I don't know, bots as a filter. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what to do with that. I feel like there's a metric somewhere in there, but I'm not, I'm just not quite sure. So, I mean, generally bots act as they're, they're a proxy for an individual, right? So even if the task is automated, that task is a task that ultimately is assigned to that individual who's overseeing the bot, right? So even a, a, in looking at contributor activity or uh, if I'm managing a bot, am I responsible for all the actions that the, that the bot have, has performed? I think in a lot of cases, maybe no, because if you look at a lot of the bot activity, it's like like kicking off CI/CD stuff. And I, you know, when I'm looking at community metrics, like what you'd find in the Grimoire Labs dashboard or Augur, um, I don't care about that. I don't care about the CLA or DCO checks. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I just don't, I don't want to look at, and so I I filter out all of that all of that bot activity because I'm interested in the activity of humans. That doesn't help for this metric, but. Well, maybe it is then just bot activity. Like that's the metric. And the reason to have a metric around bot activity is to use for like what you're talking about, Don, just to help filter out some of the noise that comes from bots and it may be false noise. So for example, like I have under objectives, time to first response, like that's a metric that we have. <laughs> we probably want to filter out bots on that one just because- They respond really fast. They're really good <laughs> and they're really going to skew this and that's not probably nobody, what, what you're nope. looking for. Yeah, but... nobody walks into their office and interrupts them. Can, can we have a metric about the relationship between happiness and number of bots around? <laughs> now we're getting this sci-fi. No, seriously, I think the one of the, the, the comments we have there that the indication of maturity is, is is probably something to have in mind when measuring bots. And perhaps the the metric or or a simpler metric we can go ahead with is number of data sources or or so that they are already using bots. So for instance, now in Slack, we have a bot. So now a bot is making Elizabeth happier, definitely. She doesn't have to focus on that specific activity. Um, hey. Basically, yeah, go ahead, Vina. Sorry, uh, I don't want to interrupt. Oh, no, go ahead. You, go ahead. you finish your thought and then I'll oh, yeah. uh, So maybe what I was seeing is like, a, uh, even, reaching to the happiness point, there is a middle point, which is efficiency, which makes you happy. So efficiency through bot, like how bot is helpful in making the process efficient or smooth lining the process in that. Uh, so maybe looking at the bot from like how bot is supporting the efficiency or work progress in achieving that ultimate goal or happiness. I, I also think that indication of maturity could be questionable and I can be convinced otherwise, but uh, you know, I've worked on super small teams that heavily relied on bots because uh, we just didn't have the resources, but it was an early project. And so it was super not mature, but the bots helped us um, kind of get things done when we were super, super limited. So um, I, I might question that a little bit. Yeah, I do too, and I'm the one that suggested it um, because <laughs> now that I now that I think about it, I think I think I feel like it's an indication of maturity because a lot of projects that have you know been around a long time were kind of the first ones to embrace the bots, but now I think some of the bots have gotten so easy to use and so prolific that people kind of expect them even on projects that are smaller and less mature, especially around some of the automation related to like the CI/CD systems. I like possibly maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
extremely definitive and also accurate. So what do people think about just a metric which is called bot activity? Mm. That's it. And then I'm thinking from common perspective, the common yeah. working group perspective. And then as other working groups pick up this metric, there are different reasons why you might want to look at bot activity. So for example, time to first response could be a filter that you would use. That's oftentimes how the common metrics are used. Yeah, I like this. Another... I think bot activity is a good place to start. Sorry, Elizabeth. I was just going to say, we do have another metric called volume of bot activity already on the spreadsheet. Right. There's no information about it. So I don't know if we've done anything with it, but we did put it in there. Okay. This is helpful. Thank you. So I'll take an action item to start kind of working on this just from a bot activity perspective or volume of bot activity perspective. Okay. You might want to, <clears throat> if you have a chance, uh, you, you may want to join the risk working group and, and bring this up because there's been a good deal of discussion about bots. We haven't done anything about it. You know, sometimes we just chat, but but there has been some discussion of bots and, and their role in, in different kinds of risk management activity. Or you can just look at our notes. It might be good once we work through this a little bit more here in the common working group um, to take it into the risk group for feedback after we have kind of a start on it. That might be good, especially if you've already been having a lot of conversations about bots. Okay, cool. Um, we had the other two collaboration platforms and event locations. I'm not sure who's driving either of these. We have Sorry, do we try to end at a quarter till or 10 till? 10 till. Okay, so we have 10 more minutes, nine minutes. Do we have a preference for which one we talk about? Event locations or collaboration platforms? Who's driving collaboration platforms? Who's done the work so far? Uh, I was driving that, but uh, at this point, it's kind of been uh, set free. I think it lives in the wild now. Uh, I think we're, we're, we're nearing the end uh, on collaboration free. platforms. So Okay. Free, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> setting it free. Um, so Kevin, let me ask a different question. Is there, is there any feedback that you need from, from this group on this before we um, kind of finalize it and turn it into a PR? Uh, so I think the last time we had worked on it, Daniel was not here, uh, and Daniel was part of the uh, initial discussions on this metric. So I would be interested in getting some feedback from Daniel, uh, specifically because we're we're using a, a, a visualization from Baturgia here. Mm -hmm. I can do it. Okay, so I think if we just need feedback from one person, let's just uh, give him the action item to do that, which I'll let Matt do because he's taking notes. I keep dropping in and out of the notes. Um, so let's give Daniel an action item to work on the collaboration platforms. Mm -hmm. um, metric. And then what about event locations? Who's been driving that one so far? Apparently no know. one or yeah. somebody, somebody who's not on the call. Who are we, who are we missing out of some of the usual suspects? 
Could be Georg, he's not here. Show us. Uh, um, I'm the, I looked at the history. It's only yeah. me. Oh. <laughs> so apparently Matt's driving it and just doesn't yeah. remember it. <laughs> it's been so long since we've looked at this one. Shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> Yeah, well, you saw me go into the version history. I would have found you out. <laughs> All right. Um, is this one, we have about seven more minutes. Is this one, do you want us to, to go through it here in the, here in the call and talk about it, talk about it that'd more? Be, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to drive since you're. Sure. Driving? I'm finishing up notes on collaboration platforms. Okay. So why don't people start by kind of having a look, reading what's there and maybe adding, adding things, adding comments. So is this one about, uh, what are we, are we measuring this at the project level? Uh, so Specifically, are we just talking about open source project events? For example, ChaosCon is a project event versus Open Source Summit is this higher level event. Uh, I, I interpreted it as project. project, yeah. At the project, at the project level, so. So very specific to chaos con type events, which could be co-located with an open source summit. Or embedded within an open source summit, but chaos con is what we're measuring. I think so. As I don't know what people's thoughts are, but as, as reading the text, this is almost starting to feel like an inclusion metric, like in the DEI working group. If we're talking about events as being you know sensitive to time zones, I know that a lot of virtual events have done that recently. I think that just happened last weekend, didn't it? With KubeCon, wasn't there like attention to the European time zones? Um, mm -hmm. or ensuring that events are located globally so people can participate. 
I think I, th I no think that. So I I see this as a common metric. Um, I think that the the DEI working group would could use this as um, like an atomic metric as a part of some more specific DEI. Metrics. Okay. Because this doesn't really have anything to do with inclusion. This is just where are they located? And then there could be an inclusion metric that kind of sits on top of this that looks at how, like how global, global inclusion in yeah, event like location. How, how like, where like. the event is located impacts inclusion. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, do other people agree, disagree? There are quite a few of you that are in both working groups. Yeah, I agree with this. And then it came to my mind another another discussion I had with some more people about uh, where meetups are taking place, which is a subtype of meetings here. And then depending, uh, as meetups are kind of volunteer driven sometimes, then uh, companies that are investing in open source, they may decide, oh, there are people, uh, there are not meetups in Paris, in France, maybe. So then we should invest some resources there or the other way around. There are a lot of meetups in Paris, in France, so we should invest a lot of resources there. But at least you have the data and decide where to go, which is perhaps related to value. Well, I don't know. Well, maybe. I could see a case uh, for evolution as well in this um, kind of, you know, it kind of represents how big a project is and how, how mature based on if they're, you know, having global events for it, then it's probably pretty big and, and mature, so. I mean, when I think of, uh, I have bucketed all of, all things event in DEI. <laughs> I am not unwilling to have the evolution group pursue it either, but, but I think there's a lot of experience in the DEI group in thinking about events, even if this isn't a DEI question, um, maybe it's a value working group, or maybe it's common. I, I'm a professor, so I just, all the answers are right. I think, I common. think, it's, I think it's perfectly fine here in common. Yeah. Uh, okay. And to so, Don's point, yeah. other other uh, other working groups can mm -hmm. use it however they want to, but I think we we can we can build it the way we want to build it here. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so we are we are over time. Um, so let's let's stop here. Um, but we can we can pick this one up again um, next week if anybody wants to work on it in the meantime. That would be that would be cool. Um, anything else, quick before we before we wrap it up. Enjoy your break. Thanks. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. It was great chatting with all of you. And have a good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. And talk to you in a couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, talk thanks. to you in a couple of weeks. Enjoy your time off, John. Thanks. Bye. 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 I love Europe. There's so much.